Meta AI just released their most powerful large language models. It's called Llama 3.1 405B. And they also have a new version of Llama 3, Llama 3.170B. This is the default model, but this one is the one that a lot of people have been waiting for. It's available right now. I'm gonna take it for a test in this video and you could use it right here at meta.ai. I'm gonna show you 10 examples. If you've never heard of Llama, if you didn't use Llama 2 or Llama 3, Llama is a large language model just like GPT inside of ChatGPT or Claude. Now, the difference between those and this one is this is completely open source and is completely free to use. As a user of it, as just a regular user of it, you could go to meta.ai and use it for free right now without any limitation. As a developer, you could also build apps on top of it without pretty much any limitation either. So you don't have to pay companies like ChatGPT's company, OpenAI, or Claude. You don't have to pay those companies any money to use their models to build apps on top of. So a lot of developers love these open source models because of that. Okay, let me show you this right here. Llama 3.1 405B model. This is their biggest and best model. So they're gonna compare it with the best models that are available from other companies right over here. And GPT 4.0, right? This is the one that's the best model available inside of ChatGPT. In all the benchmarks, it's one in a couple of different areas, but just barely. 88.6, 88.7, so pretty much a tie. Over here, it's a little bit better, but in every other benchmark here, it's actually losing to an open source free model. This is a paid model typically. You have it to some extent inside of ChatGPT, but if you were using it as a developer to build on top of, you have to pay OpenAI when you use this kind of model. Claw 3.5 Sonnet, the best model available right now, and it's virtually either a tie or it wins in a few different categories by a good margin, but for the most part, it's very much in part, I mean, look at this, 96.8 in this math eval, 96.4, right? It's just wild that an open source free model could even compare to these models. They usually wouldn't compare these, they would compare it to other open source model, which they've done that here. So this one, look at that, it's just winning in every category and here they're comparing even the lesser model. So right now, Llama 3.1 has three different models that they rolled out. This one, 8B, 70B, and they're all called Llama 3.1. The previous model was called Llama 3, and then they have the 400B. So I'll link this page in the description if you wanna really dive deeper into some of the architecture or some more advanced stuff that I usually don't dive into on this channel at all. But we'll take it for a test because sometimes these benchmarks don't accurately represent these models. So I do want to test it. And this page right here, it lets you download these if for some reason you want to download it. I usually make videos for more non-technical people. So I'm going to show you how to just run this on their own website and another website that's a little bit faster. It's completely open right now to use. And they have three different models. So typically you don't want to use this one unless you want to do something on a local install version of this. So this is the one they've always had, but now there's a new version of it that's better. And then you have obviously this one that we've been waiting for for quite a while, for since April, I think, when they first kind of announced that this was in the works and being trained. And they have partnerships with a ton of different companies that give you other things that maybe the off-the-shelf Llama doesn't give you. So again, this is for more advanced people. For non-technical people, right here, try 405B on Meta AI. That's gonna bring you to meta.ai. You could log in with your Facebook and Instagram, for example, since they own all these things now. So you have two models available. So if you go to the settings right here, the settings tab, it's gonna let you choose your different models and they finally have dark mode, which is really nice. Now they have this model, right? This is not the one I wanna test out. I wanna test out this one in preview mode. We've been waiting for this one for quite a while. Okay, now Meta AI doesn't have a lot of the functionalities here, but the purpose of this is for me to show you this large language model. So I can upload files to it. I can't analyze things with vision and things like that. The only thing they do have is inside of this Imagine tab, it does create images using a text prompt. So that is part of Meta AI, just in case you haven't used Meta AI yet. But for the most part, new conversation, your prompt goes here and you send it out. Now, another way you could use it is there is a website called grok.com. 
Now, this is more of a hardware company. They make chips for AI, but they also have this free website. And over here, you could choose all kinds of different open source models. And 400B is one of those. You have the other ones over here, the other Llama models, the older Llama models. So you could choose it here and then send out a prompt over here. And this is one of the companies that they've partnered with. Okay, let's take this for a practical test. I'm gonna run it across 10 different categories of prompts. So I wanna test it with things like text generation and summarization ideation, just logical processing, and then I'll do some coding and more advanced things towards the end of the video. And I also have this free resource. This is a nine page PDF you could get on my website. I'll link it below in the description. This is a way to prompt meta the right way to get better results. So it's specifically about seven prompting techniques that I picked out when they released their prompting guide a few months ago. They released a massive prompt guide and I picked seven that I think will make the biggest difference when you're using large language models. And this also subscribes you to our newsletter. We send a weekly newsletter focused on AI education, not just AI news. And I'll send you other free resources as well. Now, this first prompt is based on logical reasoning. I want to see if it's any good at that. And then I'll make upcoming videos comparing this with other top models like GPT-40 and Claude 3.5 Sana. Right now, I want to just focus on this and see how well it does. A snail is at the bottom of a 20 foot well. Each day it climbs three feet, but at night slips back two feet, how many days? So little reasoning, little math, let's see what we get. Okay, it says 18 days, which I believe is right. Now I'm gonna run another prompt. I'm gonna change this to a 30 foot well, and this should change it. It should add some days. And 28 days is what I was looking for. So this was the actual one that I found online. I changed the numbers because sometimes I found some of the training data might have riddles. Some of the people in the comment section told me that. So I started changing some of the numbers and did the math and this is right. It did a really good job here. Now the next one is gonna be for summarizing text. And I do this a lot of times to go through a lot of text very quickly. This is probably one of the most useful ways I've been using AI for the last couple of years. And I'm gonna go back to this page and I'm gonna literally copy everything. This is kind of a massive page. So that's gonna kind of help us test the context window too. All right, let me send this out. Nope. Oh, something went wrong. So inside of Meta AI, it doesn't look like it's letting us do that big of a context window. Okay, let me try a smaller page. Let's see what Zuckerberg has to say on this page. Let's go ahead and copy this much text. Okay, this is pretty long too, so I'll just kind of stop here. And in the next video where I compare it to ChatGPT, and Claude will find out if that was a limitation of the context window. But again, this is not a test of meta AI. So some of that might be just limited to what meta AI can do and not just specific to that large language model we're using. Okay, very good. The tone is non-promotional, just very straightforward, which is typically what I like out of large language models. Give me this in bullet points. Let's follow that up. Okay, the bullet points actually look really good. And I read that whole article so I could see this is actually pulling things I might manually pull out. So it's done a good job with that. I wanted to also see how well it does on word count. Typically large language models don't do a good job on word count. So I said 100 to 150. So we just want that. Word count, nice, 146. It got it right this time, right within the window of our prompt. All right, let's test some creative writing here. A lot of times I use this to come up with creative ideas even when it's Related to marketing, I want some creative ideas. Create a short story, 200 words, about a character who discovers a hidden world within the reflection and not bad. Pretty creative, pretty in par with other large language models like ChatGPT that I've used for kind of creative exercises like this. A decent story. Let's check on our word count over here, 185 words. And let me test out a marketing prompt. Write a product description for a smartwatch that tracks fitness goals sends notification, here's the tone, should be persuasive with a focus on appealing to young adults. So I kind of described my target market here. I told it the tone, let's see if it follows that tone. So this should be in this case, promotional. When I use recapping, if I don't give it a tone, I just want it to be straightforward when I'm summarizing text using whatever the tone of the original text is. Okay, I think it's done a great job. It came up with a name, Pulse Pro, great intro here. Nice benefits in bullet point formats, scarcity with limited time offer, how to order, great, this is perfect. Now let's use it for ideation. A Lot of times when I'm using large language models, I'm using it to kind of help me think through my own thought process and get some better ideas. 
This time, let's say I'm coming up with a digital product. Generate a digital product idea for a company like Disney to enter the VR world. Okay, Disney's Dreamscape, pretty cool name. Immersive VR experience. Explore worlds, Disney environments, hundreds of acres of woods. Hardware required. Oh, even monetization strategy, which is interesting. I didn't ask for that, but that's useful. Target audience, competitive advantage, marketing strategy. Ooh, a whole launch plan. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's not bad. Very detailed. Next, let's do a writing example, but this is going to be technical writing. A lot of times I feel like these models don't do a good job when it comes to things that are technical. So write a technical spec documenting a new API endpoint. Okay, from the format perspective, it's done a really good job and I didn't give it enough of a prompt to really be very specific. I just wanted to see if it's going to give it a nice structure of how I would want a technical document to look like. Oh, it created some kind of link here. What is this link? Oh, weird. It just made up a link to a place that doesn't exist. Almost every single large language model creates links that don't go anywhere. So I'm not sure why he did that, but uh, not bad. Okay, let's see if you could optimize content. So ton of people use AI to write blog posts. So I'm going to use this prompt. Optimize a given blog post title and meta description for search engine using relevant keywords and attention grabbing language. So I just Google Llama 3.1 so we could take a title of this blog and we'll take the meta description over here. Okay, so it gave us a title. It gave us a meta description and it says the things that is changed. So it's added relevant keywords, emphasize the uniqueness of the model, the most advanced open source model yet, which is accurate. Include the model's name and version. Okay, it's done that. And it's changed these things related to the meta description. Great. I think everything I know about SEO, I've been doing SEO for a long time, since 2012, I think. And it looks pretty good at first glance. I think this title and meta description are something I would actually use in the real world. Now, let's take this for a quick coding test. And I want to see, based on some previous experience I have, if this is going to do a better job than the other models I've tested these prompts with. Create a game of checkers that I could run on my Mac as an app. Okay, so this is going to give me the step-by-step -step guide on how I would run this on my Mac. It's giving me the code right over here. Okay, so here is the game I got. It doesn't look great. Let's see if it functions. Oh, that is not right. That is backwards also. And okay, it is uh, <laughs> not working at all. But let me try again. Let me ask for it to fix it. Okay, here's another version. This time we got the colors right and kind of made them into pieces. And all right, well, oh, nope, <laughs> it doesn't work at all. And just to be fair, I have never got a large language model to do this game properly where the functions of it works. Most of them give me a better layout and it looks more like checkers than what, whatever this was but uh, none of them work. All right, this time I'm gonna just ask it for a game of Snake. I've had success with this one inside of Claude and inside of ChatGPT. Okay, this is looking good so far. Let's see. All right, got a little bit bigger. It's not speeding up, but it is getting bigger as I collect more of these. There we go. So it's working pretty good. Let's see what happens if we crash into a wall. If you crash into a wall, game over. No reset though, I can't reset the game. But it worked perfectly fine. There was no issues and that was the very first time I got the code. So you usually would do a little bit of revision, figure out what you wanna improve, add a little reset, maybe change the speed as you get to higher levels, but not bad. Okay, that was just a launch day overview. So I'll do a deeper dive. I usually like to spend a few days with these after I do the launch video, compare it with other models to see how practical can they really be. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that video next. Thanks so much for watching this one. Let me know what you think of Llama inside of Meta AI if you're gonna test that out on your own, what your results were, and I'll see you on the next video.